In the vast expanse of the universe, one celestial body has captivated humanity for millennia, the moon. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. For centuries, humanity has gazed up at the moon, pondering its secrets. From folklore that speaks of lunar gods to modern conspiracy theories, the moon has remained shrouded in intrigue and speculation. What if you found out that the moon is not merely a lifeless rock orbiting our planet? What if hidden beneath its tranquil surface lies a world of mysteries waiting to be unveiled? Join us on this exploration as we unveil the fact that the moon is not what you think. Hidden struggles and alien encounters. It's no longer a secret that the NASA astronauts on the Apollo 11 mission were left to their own devices for a few minutes when they landed on the moon. Back in the 1960s, NASA worked hard to cover up this embarrassing incident. During the critical landing approach, two modules of the automatic control system failed, and there were radio communication problems. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had to manage the landing on their own. Thanks to their extraordinary skills, the Eagle landing module touched down safely on the moon, despite these failures. The television audience, however, was completely unaware of these issues. Officially, everything went smoothly. Armstrong and Aldrin were so pumped with adrenaline after the landing that they decided to skip the scheduled rest period and proceed with their tasks on the moon. Once again, NASA altered the plan without informing the public, maintaining the illusion of a perfectly executed mission. The truth about these hidden difficulties only emerged decades later, leading to significant criticism of NASA for presenting a flawless facade. As the years passed, even more concealed details surfaced. Allegedly, Armstrong and Aldrin saw massive spaceships on the moon. Although the corresponding radio messages were never made public, witnesses who worked at NASA in 1969 claimed to have heard these communications firsthand. Despite these claims, Armstrong and Aldrin consistently denied seeing anything unusual or encountering aliens on the moon. These cover-ups and denials eventually fueled skepticism about the authenticity of the entire moon landing. Speculations abound regarding secret space programs and agreements between the United States government and extraterrestrial races. Among these rumors stands a mysterious treaty, allegedly forged on February 20, 1954 between President Dwight Eisenhower and an extraterrestrial race known as the Greys. Greys are gray-skinned humanoid creatures with distinct features. They typically lack external human body parts like noses, ears, or sex organs. Their bodies are elongated, with small chests, lacking muscular definition or visible skeletal structure. Their legs appear shorter and differently jointed compared to humans, with limbs proportionally different. Notably, Greys have unusually large heads in proportion to their bodies, devoid of hair, outer ears, or noses. Instead, they may have small openings or orifices for ears, nostrils, and mouths. Some accounts even suggest that Eisenhower permitted the Greys to conduct regular abductions and examinations of humans, provided they were returned unharmed with erased memories. Reports of such abductions, often involving small grey aliens, echo worldwide. Victims of these encounters frequently endure profound trauma, their stories dismissed by skeptics. Some even claim immunity to the memory erasure practiced by the Greys. Additionally, Eisenhower purportedly shared advanced technology with the aliens, allowing two of their ambassadors, Krill, described as a reptilian creature from the Dragon Constellation, and J-Rod, a Grey from Zeta Reticuli, to reside permanently on Earth. The infamous Roswell incident of 1947 further fuels these speculations. Allegedly, a UFO crashed in Roswell, followed by sightings of a spaceship and a gray alien at Area 51. Investigations led people to believe that the Roswell crash marked the genesis of U.S. government contact with the Greys, culminating in the secretive treaty of 1954. Reports of Eisenhower's covert meeting with the Greys at Edwards Air Force Base during a purported dental emergency add layers to the intrigue. Internal accounts from NASA and the military 
suggests that contact with the Greys inflicted psychological distress on witnesses, with some suffering depression and anxiety, and others tragically succumbing to suicide. William Cooper, a former naval intelligence officer turned whistleblower, shared intriguing insights in his testimonies. According to him, there are two alien races, the friendly Nordics and the cunning Greys. Cooper alleged that the Nordics facilitated a non-aggression agreement between humanity and the Greys, permitting the latter to conduct periodic abductions for medical reasons. Despite Cooper's claims, these theories remain heavily debated today. Neither NASA nor the U.S. government has provided official statements and any comments on these claims are consistently denied. Moon Obelisks on November 20, 1966, the Lunar Orbiter 2 captured a photograph of an area in the Sea of Tranquility, just 300 kilometers from where Apollo 11 would eventually land. What intrigued scientists was the undeniable presence of structures that looked remarkably like obelisks. There were eight different spires, and the largest was calculated to be 15 stories tall. These spires bore a striking resemblance to Egyptian-style obelisks, raising the question, what were they doing on the moon? Of the many anomalies found on the moon, these spires are among the most fascinating. Astronomers have noted that their height makes it unlikely they are natural formations. Given the moon's surface has been bombarded by meteors for 4.5 billion years, it seems unlikely that anything taller than a basketball could remain standing. This leads to the inference that these structures must be artificial. It's speculated that NASA was aware of these structures and one of the reasons for the Apollo missions was to investigate them further. During the Apollo 11 mission, as the astronauts were descending to the lunar surface, they encountered a strange computer alarm, Alarm 1202. No one knew what it was at first, but it was later determined that the computer was overwhelmed with information because Aldrin, the lunar module pilot, had turned on both radars of the lunar lander. One radar pointed down and the other pointed to the side. If there were no structures on the moon's surface, there would have been no need to turn on the side radar. This suggests that Aldrin and NASA knew there was a risk of colliding with these spires. In 1960, NASA officials commissioned a report from the Brookings Institution to assess the implications of discovering extraterrestrial life. The report's findings led researchers to believe that any evidence of extraterrestrial life found during the moon missions would be kept hidden from the public to avoid social unrest. Since the first Apollo missions, researchers have examined NASA and Russian photos of the moon, looking for structures. They have found unusual features that suggest extraterrestrial activity, although NASA scientists do not officially acknowledge them as genuine. The presence of these mysterious spires and other anomalies continues to fuel speculation and interest in the true nature of the moon's surface and what secrets it may hold. Whistleblower Unveils NASA's Moon Mysteries In the 1960s, Ken Johnston was a NASA test pilot. Later, as the director of the Data and Photo Control Department at the Johnston Space Flight Center, he encountered something truly intriguing. During one of the moon missions, the astronauts returned with some fascinating photographs. Johnston was shocked by what he saw in these images. Some of the craters on the moon appeared to show domes and actual bases, he described these dome-shaped objects located in the middle of one of the craters as something quite extraordinary. When Ken asked his boss about these photos, he was told to stop asking questions. Despite some arguing, his boss insisted that the pictures needed to be disposed of. This raises the question, is there a cover-up? Determined to preserve the truth, Johnston took a bold step. He saved some of the original photos and negatives that were slated for destruction, ensuring that future generations could see them and perhaps uncover the real story behind these lunar mysteries. After retiring from active duty, Johnston decided to become a whistleblower, revealing some truly outrageous claims. He asserted that NASA deliberately withholds intriguing images and information. He explained how the photos released to the public are carefully manipulated to hide anomalies. Ken isn't the only one who believes there has been alien activity on the moon. Some photos show what appear to be vehicle tracks. The big question is, how did these things get there? Journalist Alexis Brooks suggests that these tracks could be the work of an ancient interstellar civilization known as the Anunnaki. According to some theories, 
the Anunnaki's technology played a significant role in constructing structures like the pyramids on Earth. This raises the possibility, did this ancient race set foot on the moon as well? The Anunnaki first appeared in the ancient traditions of the Sumerians and Babylonians over 3,000 years ago. Do these images imply that they, or another civilization, landed on the moon? To investigate, astrophotographer Andrew McCarthy examined the photo of the alleged bases. At first glance, the structures indeed look artificial. McCarthy focused on the crater around the structures, explaining that when an impact occurs, debris is flung everywhere, sometimes creating irregular piles in the middle of the crater. If these piles were absent, it would be unusual. Next, Mars mission planner Jonathan Hill examined the mysterious tracks. Hill noted that boulders often create similar tracks when they move across the lunar surface. However, these tracks were perfectly parallel, making Hill wonder if they could be from lunar rovers driven by Apollo astronauts. After checking images from Apollo landing sites, he found no match. It's important to remember that the United States was not the only country to send wheeled vehicles to the moon. In 1970, the Soviet Lunokhod 1 was the first remote-controlled rover to land on an extraterrestrial body, and the width of its tracks seemed to match the mystery photo. Hill concluded that the tracks looked very similar to those made by Lunokhod 1, but he admitted that there's no definitive proof that this rover caused these specific tracks. As we look forward to future moon missions, hopefully, we'll uncover more secrets of the moon and continue to unravel these mysteries. Secrets of the Stargate Project In the 1970s, the United States government allocated funds to study paranormal phenomena. Although the budget was modest, today it is publicly known and highlights the ongoing interest authorities have in the existence and potential weaponization of supernatural talents. The most famous of these endeavors was a covert U.S. Army unit, based at Fort Meade, Maryland. The Defense Intelligence Agency partnered with SRI International, formerly known as the Stanford Research Institute, to spearhead what eventually became known as the Stargate Project. The aim of their research was the military application of various psychic abilities, most famously remote viewing. This technique involves individuals focusing their attention on distant targets in the hope of obtaining actionable intelligence. These targets could be individuals, places, or even events. It was a fascinating proposition during the Cold War, as America and the Soviet Union sought any possible advantage. Stargate might sound unlikely, but many still contend that it was not only effective, but that the US government continues to employ remote viewers for military intelligence. Among the individuals tapped for the project were renowned parapsychologists and psychics such as Hal Puthoff, Russell Targ, Joseph McMonigal, Pat Price, Yuri Geller, and Ingo Swan. While many stories from Stargate are compelling, one particular remote viewing session from Swan stands out. A mysterious government agent named Mr. Axelrod tasked Swan with remote viewing a set of coordinates on the moon. Axelrod had already confided to Swan that the commonly held notion of the moon as an airless, lifeless ball of rock was a misnomer. There were structures there built by some kind of civilization, and both the Americans and the Soviets were scrambling for as much information as they could gather. During this session, Swan reached out with his mind in the usual fashion and soon began receiving distinct impressions of the lunar landscape. Unlike the photographs of barren plains taken during the 1969 moon landing, Swan saw in his mind's eye an entire infrastructure covered in what he referred to as nets, perhaps devices used to generate a breathable atmosphere. Everything seemed bathed in a dim, lime-green fog or mist. Peculiar towers and obelisks stretched to the stars, illuminated by glittering lights of various colors. Some bridges seemed to stretch out into nowhere, tube-like tunnels, endless roads, and countless domes peppering the edges of the craters. Other holes pocked the moonscape, clearly not craters but artificially dug excavations. Strange machines looking like tractors kicked up plumes of dust as they climbed the ashy hillsides. The entire scene gave Swan the impression of a massive mining operation. But who was running this enormous complex? He could make out structures that seemed like homes, yet there was no sign of their inhabitants. Swan continued to scrutinize the scene, mentally peering through the dark, dusty air. Finally, he saw some figures working the soil. They appeared human, or at least close enough to be indistinguishable, and most alarmingly, they were completely nude. 
As he watched, the humanoids began chattering excitedly and gesturing in his direction. They turned and looked right at him. Swan immediately felt the sensation of being spotted and had the urge to mentally flee. He later suggested that this is exactly what he did, as he instantly lost the image. Swan's vision, if accurate, raises significant questions about what we know, or don't know, about the moon. For years, various lunar anomalies have fueled speculation that we may not be getting the full story. For over eight years, seismometers left by Apollo astronauts detected moonquakes that rang like a bell. This same phenomenon was noted when Apollo 12 crashed its ascent stage onto the lunar surface, leading to speculation that the moon might be hollow or even artificial. The existence of artificial structures on the moon has also been hotly debated. One of the most vocal proponents of this idea is Richard C. Hoagland, who cites strange photographs of what seem to be buildings on the lunar surface. One photo, which he calls the Shard, appears to show a monumental tower as tall as seven miles stretching above the landscape. Another, dubbed the Castle, seems to depict a jagged structure with support struts and minarets. While some of these anomalies can be explained away as visual artifacts from low resolution, others are not so easily dismissed. There are also recordings of strange shapes, called fast walkers, moving over the lunar surface, unidentified flying objects by definition. The idea that the moon might be inhabited is a shocking revelation. Another startling implication from Swan's testimony relates to the nature of UFOs reported by eyewitnesses on Earth. Swan was shocked when the humanoids on the moon spotted him during his remote viewing session. Conventional wisdom among remote viewers held that this wasn't possible, unless those who detected him were also highly sensitive psychics. Over the past several decades, researchers have generally accepted that UFO witnesses tend to exhibit extrasensory abilities, suggesting a deeper, more complex interaction between humans and these phenomena than previously understood. Alien Encounters and Human Consciousness the question of whether heightened psychic abilities are a result of UFO contact, or if these abilities exist beforehand, has long been debated. In other words, do people with natural sensitivity see UFOs more easily? If Swan's remote viewing of the moon was accurate, it supports the idea that UFO sightings are more common among individuals with a greater psychic sensitivity, even if they're unaware of it. This also suggests that UFOs might not be physical spacecraft from another planet, but rather the consciousness of alien intelligence remotely viewing Earth. Unfortunately, we don't know how the beings on the moon perceived Swan. Did he appear as a wisp or a cloud? Did he look like a classic flying saucer? Or perhaps just a ball of light? Many UFO sightings on Earth describe luminous orbs darting across the night sky. Could this be how a disembodied consciousness appears to someone with psychic abilities? Various ancient sources and contemporary first-hand accounts suggest this might be the case. Many Eastern religions describe humanity's inner light, or soul, as luminous. In Vedic cosmology, our souls are considered microcosms of the sun. The Chinese believed our souls were bright and glorious, while Japanese folklore describes disembodied human souls as glowing blue or green orbs with wispy tails. Even today, indigenous tribes like the Shuar of the Amazon do not distinguish between the ghosts of ancestors and what we call UFOs, as both appear as floating balls of light. Modern ghost hunters report seeing luminous orbs in haunted houses, which, if seen in the sky, would be indistinguishable from UFOs. Authors Philip Gardner and Gary Osborne suggest that ancient Middle Eastern depictions of flying discs were actually representations of travel in the astral realm, a disembodied state experienced during meditation, near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, and possibly remote viewing. The Egyptian Eye of Ra, or Eye of Horus, might encode this very aspect of psychic phenomena, the ability to perceive events at a distance. Could an alien civilization, facing the immense challenges of interstellar travel, have trained themselves to use their minds to visit distant planets instead? Although time-consuming, such an endeavor would be vastly more efficient than physical space travel. It would virtually eliminate travel time and negate the need for costly fuel, construction materials, or other resources required to build and power spacecraft. This intriguing idea has long been considered by ethologists, 
although it hasn't gained much traction in mainstream science. In his 1962 book, Flying Saucers and Spacemen, a scientific and metaphysical dissertation on interplanetary travel, Dr. John Manis proposed similar mechanisms. Manis wrote, It is a well-known fact to all metaphysicians and occultists that even a clear and strong thought can be projected many thousands of miles away and be materialized at its destination under proper conditions to be seen by men. All these phenomena are not mysteries or miracles. This is the truth about UFOs, commonly known as flying saucers, spaceships, and spacemen. Individuals engaged in spiritual practices, such as meditation, often report their consciousness leaving the constraints of their bodies. Many describe their true selves as small, glowing balls of light. Metaphysical author Wendy Garrett, for instance, experienced an out-of-body event at age 28 that jump-started her spirituality. While meditating, she claimed to leave her physical self behind. Despite no longer having eyes, she could see both her body on the bed and her true form. She described herself as a bowling ball-sized yellow sun that flashed and glowed as it levitated in her bedroom. This type of experience is quite common among those who practice spiritual disciplines. A 2013 paper published in the journal Frontiers in Psychology found that among a sample of 28 Buddhist meditators from Brown University, nine subjects voluntarily reported seeing lights or experiencing other forms of luminous phenomena during their practice. To solve the UFO mystery, we must consider every possibility, including those that may seem unorthodox. While many sightings describe physical, structured spacecraft, others depict the same luminous orbs associated with ancient metaphysical traditions. It's possible that on some distant planet, aliens are remote viewing our world in much the same way terrestrial psychics like Ingo Swan viewed the moon in the 1970s. This perspective could revolutionize our understanding of extraterrestrial contact and the nature of UFOs. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. In the quiet town of Brookhaven, nestled among the whispers of the wind, Joan harbored a fascination not only for the moon, but also for the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Rumors hinted at a connection between the lunar mysteries and visitors from distant worlds. One fateful night, drawn by an irresistible urge, Joan followed a path that led her deeper into the woods. Under the moon's watchful eye, she stumbled upon a peculiar scene. A door carved into the trunk of an ancient oak, emanating an otherworldly glow. Heart pounding, Joan pushed the door open and stepped into a realm that defied all she knew. Before her, stretched not just a city, but a convergence of worlds, a hub where beings from across the cosmos mingled beneath the moon's benevolent light. Amid Lunaris, Joan encountered not only earthly wonders, but also creatures whose origins lay beyond the stars. Their presence affirmed what she had long suspected. The moon is not what you think. Amidst the intergalactic bustle, Joan found kinship with beings whose existence expanded her understanding of the universe. As dawn broke, Casting its first light upon Lunaris, she marveled at the infinite possibilities that lay beyond the veil of the night sky. Do you believe that there are aliens on the moon? Unraveling the mysteries of the moon? We've been told that the moon has been around forever, but there's a lot of debate among scientists about this. They can't agree on how the moon was formed. One idea is called the capture theory, which suggests that the moon was just floating around and got pulled into orbit by the Earth. But that seems almost impossible. Another theory is called the accretion theory, which says that the moon and earth formed from dust clouds in the early solar system. But if that were true, the moon would have an iron core like the earth and would spin on an axis like the earth, which it doesn't. There was also the fission hypothesis, which suggested that the early earth was spinning so fast that a chunk of rock in the Pacific Ocean got flung into space and became the moon. But moon rocks are much older than the bottom of the ocean, so that doesn't make sense. The most popular theory nowadays is the giant impact theory. This theory says that a big object crashed into the Earth billions of years ago, creating a debris field that eventually became the Earth and Moon system. A recent theory combines all these ideas, suggesting that a large object collided with the Earth, essentially vaporizing it. This vapor formed something called a synestia, and the Moon formed on the edge of this synestia. Now, what's a synestia? Well, it's a shape like a donut. In geometry, if you revolve a circle around an axis in three-dimensional space, you get a synestia. So it's like a spinning donut 
and the moon formed on the edge of it. Even with all these theories, we still don't know for sure how the moon was created. You'd think that going to the moon and collecting rock samples would help solve the puzzle, but it only created more questions. Moon rocks and soil samples brought back to Earth are strange. On Earth, the newest rocks are at the surface, and they get older as you go deeper. But on the moon, the soil on the surface is older than the rocks underneath, which is backwards. This is just one of many odd things about the moon that scientists are still trying to figure out. Although the moon doesn't have a magnetic field, it's intriguing that moon rocks are strongly magnetized. Here's where things get really interesting. While the Earth is estimated to be 4.6 billion years old, the oldest rocks we've found are much younger. But moon rocks? They're ancient, much older than anything we've seen on Earth. Some have even been dated back to the very beginning of the solar system, and others might be even older than that. Now, what makes this even more curious is the presence of uranium-236 and neptunium-237 on the moon. These radioactive elements aren't naturally found on Earth. We usually have to make them ourselves. Additionally, titanium, chromium, and zirconium, which are rare on Earth, are abundant on the moon. These metals are known for their strength and resistance to corrosion. If you were building something sturdy, these would be the materials you'd choose. Now, let's talk about those moon craters. It's odd that they all seem to be the same depth, regardless of their size. You'd think craters of different sizes would have different depths, right? It's almost as if there's a tough metallic shell just below the moon's surface, preventing anything from going deeper. This leads to the idea of testing the hollow moon theory. Imagine if we had instruments on the moon's surface that could detect seismic activity. We could intentionally crash objects into the moon to see how it reacts. And guess what? We've actually done something similar during the Apollo missions. After returning to the command module, the Apollo 12 crew deliberately crashed the lunar lander into the moon's surface. And what happened next was quite unexpected. The moon rang like a bell and reverberated for more than an hour. This happened even with a small object compared to the size of the moon. Then, during Apollo 13, they crashed an even heavier object, and the moon rang for over three hours. On Earth, vibrations lasted only a few minutes, but on the moon, they persisted for much longer, even getting faster and deeper down. This suggests that the moon's interior might be less dense and possibly hollow, with large cavities inside. So, when it comes to the moon, there's still so much we don't understand, but the mysteries just make it even more fascinating. The Quest for Answers the idea of going back to the moon is becoming more real. Astronauts are getting ready to land on the lunar south pole by 2024. People are excited about this new exploration and are curious about what strange things we might find in this unknown place. NASA and the US Department of Energy want designs for a nuclear reactor to be on the moon by 2026. It's interesting because there are stories about strange things on the moon, maybe even a reactor. This makes us wonder if there are already things on the moon waiting for us to find them. The moon has always fascinated us. Even though we've studied it a lot, there's still a lot we don't know. It's not just a simple satellite. It's a mysterious place that challenges us. One big mystery is how it got here. Some scientists think it formed from debris after a big collision with Earth. But then there's the incredible coincidence of eclipses, where the moon perfectly covers the sun. This makes us wonder if the moon's position is just luck, or if there's something more going on. Some say the moon was captured by Earth's gravity, but that idea has a lot of problems. It's hard to believe that the moon just ended up where it is by chance. Some even think aliens had a hand in it. While we can't know for sure, there are hints that aliens might have had something to do with the moon's past, and maybe even now. It's a mystery that keeps us wondering and searching for answers. Do you think that the moon landing was a hoax? Let us know your opinion in the comments below.